Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about new research and a new paper that seems to suggest that basically everything in the universe is connected. Literally, connected through a very unusual but currently somewhat invisible filament. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So when it comes to stars and um, constellations and of course galaxies, we do know that many of them are somewhat connected to each other gravitationally. Like for example, if we were to find one of the typical global clusters here in the Milky Way galaxy, we would find ourselves in something that looks like this. And this is basically a gravitationally connected structure where all of the stars and all of the neutron stars and black holes and everything in the middle here is um, connected and moves together and never really separates from one another. These are pretty much everywhere around the universe and we've seen quite a lot of them in our own galaxy. But on much larger scales, we obviously get other gravitationally connected objects and I guess the most famous one would be this, the galaxy. But it obviously does not stop there because we've in the last few decades discovered that even galaxies connect to other galaxies. More specifically, the Milky Way, for example, connects to its satellites and to some extent to the Andromeda as well. So basically the Andromeda galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, and all of the nearby satellites like the Large Magellanic Cloud, the Small Magellanic Cloud, or even this right here, the Diffuse Sagittarius Spherical Galaxy, all of them are connected to the Milky Way through these somewhat invisible but um, nevertheless present gravitational links and in most cases we even have actual signs of those links being formed. And you may have seen one of my previous videos about the Magellanic Bridge and the Magellanic um, Stream. Both of these are actually separate connections between various galaxies. So this right here is a connection between the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud, which are these two largest satellites of the Milky Way. This right here is the large, and right there in the corner, right here, is the small Magellanic Cloud. And they do have a connection, and we've seen it um, several times now. And also, these two galaxies have an actual gas connection to our own galaxy, which unfortunately is not shown here. So in the video that I made a few uh, months ago, I did explain how all of this has been found, and how we now know that this connection is actually physical. There are even stars between these galaxies that are formed in this gas. But then, as you start looking at the larger scales, you get something known as the local group. The local group of nearby galaxies looks something like this in three dimensions, and the Milky Way is right there, this tiny spot in the middle, with these satellites being here, and the Andromeda and the Triangulum galaxies being right here, all of them also have their own satellites. This is also gravitationally connected, and we have actually found um, links, physical links, that connects them as well. Now, today most scientists believe that all of this is sort of propagated through the mysterious dark matter. And there are quite a lot of various evidence that suggests that this is actually true. But it doesn't end here. If you were to zoom out of here even more, you would discover an even larger gravitational connection, forming first a cluster and then a supercluster. This uh, supercluster that we are in is known as the Virgo supercluster. It's actually this right here. And you'll notice that there is this yellow formation. That's the largest gravitational structure we've discovered to date. And it currently has a name. It's known as Laniakea. The Laniakea supercluster is essentially the um, extremely large gravitational structure that has been reported by using this image right here. And I've also made a video about this explaining what exactly this shows um, in the past. But the idea here is that, so this is literally an actual structure. It's a physical connection between galaxies, but it also does not stop there. As we just discovered, especially in the recent paper that came out only a few weeks ago, there seem to be even more mysterious connections out there. Something that scientists currently have no idea how to explain, but they do seem to suggest that the connections are even more profound than we previously thought. And in this particular paper coming out of South Korea, what the scientists discovered is that when they looked at the galaxies nearby and compared them to the galaxies that are actually much farther away, specifically roughly around 20 to 30 million light years away from the Milky Way, which would be equivalent to maybe this distance right here, so the galaxies at this distance, all seem to also have a very unusual connection that was detected in a very unusual way. 
So when the scientists behind this paper looked at essentially properties of galaxies, they noticed that many of those galaxies were actually moving and spinning in a very similar pattern. So when they looked at certain galaxies in one direction, they noticed that those galaxies had exactly the same spin and were, for example, moving away from us. Then they looked at other galaxies in a different direction and saw the opposite effect. Those galaxies were moving away from us and also spinning in a different direction as well. And their spins and their motion was actually correlated, as if something was mysteriously causing them to move and rotate in a very similar fashion, even though they were really, really, really far away from one another. So at this distance here, there was some sort of a mysterious force causing these galaxies to behave in a very similar way, and it can't be just explained by galactic gravitational forces. It has to be something else. And one of these suggestions and one of the explanations so far is that it definitely has to relate to something known as the galactic filaments. The video about the filaments should be popping up somewhere right there, but essentially, in a nutshell, what this refers to are these formations that you see right here. This is from the beautiful Illustrious project, which created one of the most realistic, if not the most realistic, simulations of a universe. And this simulation of the universe shows us that there have to be these very unusual formations, these filaments, that are formed by the combination of this blue stuff that you see here, this is the dark matter, mixed with the actual gas that forms stars and obviously other objects as well. And at the same time, all of this is then joined in with the actual galaxies that you see right there. They're barely visible. So all of these galaxies are connected with the gas and dark matter filament. Here's what this image looks like if you were to add all of the gas. And here's what all of this image looks like if you were to add the dark matter. So all of this is not as visible as actual stars because, you know, stars are producing light that we can easily see from really far away. But neither gas nor dark matter produce much. And so we only know or we only suspect their existence simply by observing the effects. And one of these effects is, of course, this unusual observation that the galaxies seem to have some kind of a strange relationship and connection that causes them to act differently. And in a nutshell, the scientists behind this paper do suggest that there is this unexplained phenomenon that's causing these galaxies to behave in a very similar way. You can find out more about this by reading the paper in the description below. And the thing is, this is not the only thing the scientists have seen in the past few years. We also observed several other things, like for example, there is a, an unusual alignment of quasars or these really, really bright galaxies across an even larger distance. We're talking about billions of light years. This is like thousands of more times far away than what we just looked at. And this was reported by the scientists from Belgium about five years ago, and the paper for this you can also find in the description below. But here what they discovered is that even on these larger scales, the actual quasars seem to have a very unusual and somewhat predictable alignment, suggesting that these unusual filaments or whatever it is, causes the actual galaxies to kind of align, to have a very specific direction and rotation compared to other galaxies at really, really, really far away distances. There's almost no way that this happened by chance. It's almost impossible because of the amount of galaxies that they studied and also simply because this was a three-dimensional observation in every direction. This wasn't just in one single direction or in a single part of the universe. This was literally by looking this way and then looking that way and seeing a very similar repetitive pattern. Now, all in all, all of this kind of suggests one single thing. The entire universe is connected gravitationally and linked through these unusual formations about which we unfortunately know very little. And one of the reasons we actually do need to study dark matter in a little bit more detail and find out what exactly is happening with it, what it's made out of, and what it does to the universe is because it literally seems to have this effect on the entire universe. It controls the actual galaxies, it controls everything in the universe, and by being able to control dark matter or at least in some way manipulate it, we might be able to find a way to control the universe. And to quote one of the characters from Frank Herbert the Dune, he who controls the spice controls the universe, replacing the spice with the dark matter. So it's something that we need to understand if we want to one day become an interstellar and an intergalactic species. Maybe we'll succeed, maybe not. But until we discover something else about this unusual phenomenon and about these unusual effects that we're observing across millions and even billions of light years, that's really it. 
Check out the papers in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or by purchasing the beautiful, wonderful person poster or t-shirt. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.